In this video, you will learn how to make your React code dry. In short, you will learn how to write less code without repeating the same thing again. So for this application, we have three buttons for getting list of albums, users, and posts. And for the API, we're using JSON placeholder API. We can scroll down a bit. As you can see, we have endpoints available for posts, albums, and users. If I click on users, we get a list of 10 users. If I click on posts, we get a list of 100 posts. So when we click on any of the button, we make API call to get data related to that button. Let me show you the code. So we have selected page state with default value of albums. We're not using routing here. If you want, you can use it. But I wanted to show you how you can write code without using routing for this simple use case. So we're manually handling the routing. As we have set a default value of albums, when we load the page, get albums button will be active and albums related component will be displayed. And here, I'm displaying three separate buttons for getting albums, users, and posts. And on click on each button, I'm setting the selected page state value depending on which button is clicked. And based on the current selected page, I'm adding active class to the button so it's clear which page we're on. And here, depending on the selected page, I'm displaying the corresponding component, which displays the data coming from the API. But as you can see, the component code is becoming large. And if we decide to add more conditions here, then it will again increase. So if I want to display comments from the API, then I need to add one more condition. And here I will display comments component. And if later I want to display to do's, then again I need to add to do's condition. So the code will become unmanageable. And for large applications, this is a common scenario. Let's say you have a list of icons, and on click of each icon, you want to display different components. Then writing code like this will become headache, and the code will become difficult to debug and test. Also, we're repeating the text albums, users, multiple times. So if we make any typo while specifying the type, then the code will not work as expected. So let's see how to improve this code. For that, I will create a pages array with names of pages, albums, users, and posts. And based on that, we can display the corresponding component. So for that, I will declare a components object. So when the page is albums, we will display the albums component. Note that the first letter is capital here as it's a component, which we have already imported at the top. Now when it's users, I will display the users component. And for posts, we can display the post component. Now instead of manually adding these buttons separately, we can loop over the pages array and display the corresponding button. So we will use array map method here. And for the individual page, we will display the corresponding button. Now instead of the hard-coded albums text, we can use the page parameter value, which is coming from the pages array. Now instead of get albums text, we will display dynamic value with capital first letter. So we will say page.char at zero to get character from the zeroth position. Now as you can see, we get the first character, but we want it to be in capital so we will use to uppercase method. Now you can see the first letter is capital. Now to get the remaining characters from the text, we can use the string slice method. So I will append the page.slice from position 1, which will give you all the remaining characters starting from position 1. Now you can see, we get the exact same text, but now it's dynamic and not hard-coded. So I will remove this previous code, which is as expected. Now with this map method added, we just need to add new entry in the pages array, and a new button will be displayed on the UI with that added text.
Now for displaying the component conditionally, let's declare a constant, selected component equal to, components of selected page. So from the components object, we're displaying the selected page property value, which is albums by default. So when we access components of albums, we get the albums component. As this will be a component, make sure to write capital first letter. Now let's render that component, and I will remove this code. Note that we're displaying the component outside this map method, and not inside, because we want only the selected page component code to be displayed at a time. So when we click on any button, we're setting the selected page state value, so the component will re-render, and we will get the corresponding component in the selected component variable. Now as you can see, by default albums component is displayed, and when we click on users, we see a list of users, and clicking on posts, displays list of posts. And everything works as expected. So we have made the code generic and easy to scale. And instead of declaring these constants here, we can move them in a separate file. So let's create a utils folder inside SRC, and inside it, we will create constants.js file. Now we can cut it from here and paste it in the constants file. Let's export both of them as named export, so we can use them in the app component. Also while declaring constants, it's a common practice to declare them in uppercase, which indicates that they're constants. Now, here we need to use the uppercase components, and here uppercase pages. And don't forget to import the albums component here. Same for users and posts. Now, if I refresh the page, you can see it still works. We can also simplify this further to remove the need of this pages array. In this components array, we have given keys which matches with the pages array, so we can use these keys instead of the pages array. So let's remove the pages array. Now in the app component, we can use object.keys of components. And if I refresh the page, you can see it still works. So we're missing a key while using array map method. So let's use page as the key which is unique for the array. Now if I refresh the page, we don't get any warning now. Let me show you how the object.keys method works. So if we have an object like this, and if I use object.keys of components, Then we get back an array of only keys from that object, as you can see here. If you want values, you can use object.values method which gives only values from that object. So using object.keys method, we have removed the need of using that extra pages array. So that's how you can avoid writing extra code and make your code more generic, so you don't need to change a lot of code later for adding new options. Writing code like this also helps to make your code shorter and easy to understand. So that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, do like it, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.